You're listening to the George Espinlock Show, coming to you live on this Thursday night edition of Unshackled, plus more. All of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation and around the world, we welcome you tonight. We hope you sit back, enjoy the music, enjoy another exciting episode of Unshackled, featuring... Jamie Anderson. It'll be the Jamie Anderson story tonight. Plus, we're going to give you some updates on my grandson and the surprising, scary episode that took place last evening. And we're going to give a great big thanks to a whole lot of people. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We're back. We're plugged in. And we're going to keep on keeping on. I do want to say this. In times like these, you know, you know that you can count on friends and family. And I appreciate all the prayers from around the world that's been making their way heavenward for our grandson, Jeffrey who last night, just about 5.40 p.m. in the evening, as I was getting ready to uh, leave go on the show, suddenly he literally passed out and fell off the rocking chair that he was sitting in, and he was unconscious. He came around in a little while, He was soaking wet with sweat. He was nauseated. 911 was called, dispatched. And I want to say thank you to the EMS for arriving at the house so quickly. Once they were there, once once they arrived here, we stepped back. They got him up, put him back on the rocking chair, and was asking him questions and doing the things that they do. And while they were talking to him, he went again and literally slid off the front of the rocking chair unconscious. They transported him to Nanny Cook Hospital, which is in Seaford, Delaware. And while we were in the emergency room with them and they were doing all the things that they do, as I was standing at the foot of his bed and they were working on him, talking to him, all of a sudden 
he left us again. They did a fantastic job. I mean a fantastic job. After that episode, the doctor came in and told us. First, he asked his parents if he had had any heart problems, and of course he hasn't. He's athletic. He plays football, baseball. He has never been seriously sick in his life other than having the normal things that we all get occasionally. And he said that we do not have the pediatric cardiac care here at this hospital, so we are going to send him to A.I. DuPont Children's Hospital in Wilmington, Delaware. He didn't have no more episodes, and they, of course, they had him hooked up to the monitors and so on and so forth, and I want to say thank you to the two nurses, the male nurse <coughs> and female nurse that was in charge of taking care of Jeffrey last night. They were magnificent people. They were personable. They told you what was going on. They put the, put their arms around my daughter and told her that everything was going to be all right and explained everything in detail. They were magnificent people. In fact, the whole staff at the emergency room in Seaford was just extraordinarily so kind, and we thanked them for it. They brought the chopper from A.I. DuPont in Wilmington, and the personnel came in. And by now, I guess it's been a couple hours that had passed. And they removed all of the monitors and so on and so forth from Jeffrey and hooked up their own monitors. They were in their flight suits. They stepped off the, the chopper on the LZ and came straight to the emergency room. They did all that. They told them that what the ride would consist of and so on and so forth. And as we gathered around and watched, I was struck by their professionalism. And I was thinking, thank God. Thank God for men and women like this that dedicate their life to helping others that's facing crises. They transferred from the bed in the emergency room to their gurney. And they proceeded to take him to the LZ, put him in the chopper, and away he went. Of course, he arrived quite some time before the family was able to get there. We live on the southern part of, of Delaware, and A.I. DuPont in Wilmington is at the far northern portion of Delaware. So he was there very quickly by the way of air and when the hospital was contacted by my daughter the nurse said that he was all right they had him hooked up to the machinery he was watching a video and he was resting comfortably and so When they arrived last night at the hospital, A.I. DuPont had a room all ready for them, right there at the hospital where they could stay. And again, I thank each and every one of the people that was involved in this time of need. To make a long story short, this morning they did an echo what is it, an echocardiogram, everything come back positive. All the blood work was positive. Every test they ran was positive. Everything was good. So the medical staff 
the pediatric cardiologists and the staff began to do the process of elimination to see if they could figure out exactly what happened. And the cardiologist conferred with the family and so on and so forth. What they did, what the final decision was, was they put him on a heart monitor. They have scheduled some more tests, including a tilt test. And that that tilt test is exactly what, what it implies. They, I always say they strap you to a board, but they actually put you on the bed. And then they tilt you up, down, sideways, right, left, so on and so forth. And they monitor everything to see if there's any changes. So they have that scheduled. He as they, they, they sent him home with this heart monitor. He can't do anything. And this monitor is sending back data straight to AI DuPont in Wilmington, Delaware. And should something occur, should he have another episode, they will immediately call my daughter, my son-in-law, and ask him what is going on. Whatever changes occur with this data, they have an eyeball on it, and they'll be well aware of what's taking place. And the doctor said it may be this one-time thing. Or it could be something, and they will find the answer. So I said all that to, to give you an update and to let you know that he is home, he's resting, and perhaps in a little while we can do, uh, do something a little different. But he has the monitor on. So no baseball. He just has to take it easy. No gym. Uh, no activity. We're just going to continue to monitor and keep an eyeball on this, whatever it was. It's a very scary situation. I do want to say this. The older you get, the more you realize that life is so very, very precious. And with less than a heartbeat, your entire life can change forever. I want to thank our family and our friends around the world, literally around the world. I've been getting kind words, and each and every person has expressed to us that we are in their prayers, and they're upholding us in prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. I really, really do. And I know that there are literally millions of others around this world that believe in the power of prayer also. And I can't help but feel that with all the prayers that's going heavenward, that's literally storming heaven, I know that things are going to turn out all right. I just want to say a great big thank you to each and every one of you, wherever you're at. Excuse me, be it down the street, around the corner, somewhere across this great nation, or around the world. I thank you. My family thanks you. I know that Jeffrey thanks you. We all thank you. And words alone can express how we feel. the light I hope 
You're listening to the George Espinlob Show, and we are going to present in just a few minutes another exciting episode of Unshackled, a true life story of a real individual who was bound. But in the end, they were unshackled by the power of the gospel. It'll be the Jamie Anderson story tonight, so we want you to sit back and enjoy yourself. But once again, I want to thank everyone for their prayers and their kind words. Keep praying. Keep storming those heaven gates with your prayers. I believe in miracles. I really, really do. And I believe that this thing is going to come out all right. I mean that. I'm nearing the front lines The battle will rage All through the night And into the day Slay me I'll keep my faith The battle is yours Oh Lord You're leading the way With prayer on my lips And a song in my heart somebody on the phone here <clears throat> we might have to try a couple numbers but we'll uh we'll, we'll do our best and two ringy dingies hello hey bubba uh, you are on the air around the world well i am uh... <laughs> yes you are sir you are live <laughs> and people That's... People down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world are listening to your voice. That's, that's good. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have Jeffrey's dad on the line, Mr. Howard. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll bet you're tired. I am very tired. <laughs> I'll bet you will sleep pretty good tonight. Absolutely. I don't like sleeping in the hard chair. But that, that gets a little hard, doesn't it, sleeping in the hard chair? Yes, it does. <laughs> Well, I want you to know, Bubba, that there are people that's praying all around the world. That's good. They need to keep going. And they're going to keep praying, and this thing's going to work out just fine. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is Missy Jo there? Yes, she is. Can we speak to her? Boy, they're doing a lot Hello. of talking. Hello, Missy Joe. Hi. You are live on the air around the world. Oh, boy. <laughs> Bubba was on live around the world. He did a fine job. I'm surprised he's able to talk. Yeah, I, I, I know. So how are you feeling? Do what? How are you feeling? I'm just tired, but I'm so happy I have good coffee. <laughs> you have good coffee? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I I can tell that you're my daughter. You. Yeah. I mean, my <laughs> coffee this morning was good, but it was French vanilla. It wasn't hazelnut. <laughs> but, I mean, it was okay, but I just wanted our coffee. Exactly. There's no coffee like our coffee, right? That's right. Instead <laughs> of like there's no place like home, there's no coffee like home coffee. So with this whole experience that we have went through, what have you learned? I have learned I freak out <laughs> and that we are never promised tomorrow, so be on it. Just go with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we really don't know how it happened. Or why it happened. Or why it no. happened to a healthy 14-year-old no. boy that plays football and baseball and is active. Yes. But we're going to find out, right? I sure hope so. He has to have a tilt test, which is just what it sounds like. They're going to put him on a table and tilt him and pump some medicine into him as they're tilting him to monitor his heart and his blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And then he has another EKG and then another visit with the doctor. How's, how's he doing right now? He said he's just tired. He got a shower so he said that made him feel better, but he's just tired. Mm, I'll bet he is. He's had a rough ordeal. <clears throat> he's been yes. on, he's been on the floor, in the bed, on the floor, on the rocking chair, on the floor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in a helicopter. In a helicopter, yes. In an ambulance. In an ambulance. <laughs> and then in a vehicle for a two-hour ride back down here. Right. <laughs> What do you think of the medical staff that, that took care of them? At AI DuPont? Even even at Seaford? Um, I thought, considering where we were, mm -hmm. I thought they did a stupendous job. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Um, the doctor didn't give us much information, but he didn't waste time. Right. By the time he went um, unconscious, to, after he, or when we got there or whatever, he was back in there saying we're sending him to A.I. DuPont. So I like the fact that he didn't him haul around to try to figure it out on his own. He knew it was out of his hands. Mm. And the nurse, the two main nurses that we had, 
were off the hook. They were. They really were. Yes. And then the ones at AI DuPont were off the chains, too. Couldn't have asked for anybody better. Well, I'm quite sure with their medical staff and all the prayers that's going to heaven, we're not only going to get some answers, but we'll have results. Well, I believe that, too. I don't know if we'll ever know. If we never find out any real answers, mm -hmm. for all we know, it could have been something very serious, very wrong, but all the prayers helped. Mm -hmm. There, there's so. still, while, while I was talking to you, another, another message came in from a lady that lives in Ohio and says that she's praying with us. I've had nothing but message after message after message today from around the world telling us that they're praying for Jeffrey. Well, I've been, they've been blowing up my phone, too. <laughs> from last night all the way today, and they're still blowing up my phone. Is Even it, since I've gave, given the latest update, they're still blowing it up. Is there anything you'd like to tell our listeners? Thank you for all the thoughts and the prayers and keep them going because we still got another 30 days to go, hopefully without incident. And it is greatly appreciated and it means a lot. It sure does. What's the possibilities of talking to Ralph? Um, it, I would say okay except for he's got a phone in his ear already ah okay so he's <laughs> people's making contact with him yeah the baseball yeah. team and the girlfriend and yeah i think it's the girlfriend i think she's chomping at the bit to see him yeah 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 all right well you pass this on from all of our listeners i i think i can speak for all of our listeners get well ralph well i call him ralph his real name is jeffrey but I think they'll all say, because they've said it in their messages, get well, we wish him the best, and we're praying for him. Those three things right there, that means so much to each and every one of us. And we thank all of our listeners everywhere for sending up their prayers, because we know, we believe in the power of prayer. All right, Missy Joe, I'll let you... Uh, I'll let you go so you can sit down and prop your feet up and enjoy your coffee, and I know you're tired. All right. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for calling and checking on us. No problem. Love you. Love you. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> and there we have it. I'm sure Jeffrey would have got on the phone if, if, if we would have pushed the matter, but he's, uh, <clears throat> he's, he is, uh, you, you know how teenagers are, girlfriend and the ball players and the schoolmates and all those people. They are ringing his phone up, and he is, uh, he's talking to as many as he possibly can. And again, we say thank you. Thank you so, so much for your prayers. How do, How you, do you do? Sometimes it takes a tragedy to wake us up to the truth, to what's important in life. So it was for the woman in our story. Alcohol and drugs made her lose sight of worthwhile things and put her on a dangerous path that led to death. She didn't see how blind she was until her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Hello? Pam, can't you go up to your grandma's? What is it? Your sister Jamie. She was in a bad accident. Oh, no, Mom. What happened? Her boyfriend was driving drunk. I don't know how it happened, but she went through the windshield. Where is she now? In the hospital. Well, is she going to be all right? The doctor said 
She may only live two hours. You'd better hurry. This is Unshackled, produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Move on, the homeless here, wherever they go. And none of us with homes can know the degradation and fear that those words convey. So the homeless move on, unable to change their circumstances, but those who come to Pacific Garden Mission get a different reception. They get a warm welcome. They're offered a meal, a hot shower, a change of clothes, and a place to sleep. Even medical and dental care, and everything is free. The old lighthouse has been open to all for over a century. And in all those years, only the counselors have said, you can move on from failure and despair to hope and new life. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 2,168 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. She was born into a broken home, raised with alcohol, rebelled with drugs, and nearly destroyed herself. But because someone was interceding on her behalf, she's here to tell her story. This is Jamie Anderson's true story of failure and restoration on Unshackled. I'm Jamie Anderson, and I was born and raised in Baltimore in a broken home. There was just Mom and my sister and me, and of course there was my grandmother, who lived in Pennsylvania. My sister and I spent vacations with her. Mom had numerous live-in boyfriends, but they never bothered me. Neither did Mom, though she had a drinking problem. She always stood by me, and believe you me, I needed it. You see, I was the real problem. I was rebellious. You're going to go and spend summer vacation with your grandmother, and I don't want to hear any more about it. Now, I don't care if she does drag you to church three times a week. It won't hurt you one bit, so quiet down and get your things packed. I loved my grandmother, but all those times she took me to church didn't seem to change my behavior. I was still rebellious, skipping school, running with the wrong crowd. I started doing drugs and drinking alcohol when I was 13. After smoking marijuana for several years, I progressed to LSD, speed, and downers. I even stayed out all night. Are you just getting in? Yeah, I've been up for hours. Long time. What's for breakfast? You'll have to fix something yourself. I'm off to work. Got any money for lunch? Here's two dollars. You go to school, young lady. You hear? No playing hooky. Sure, Mom. Don't I always... With all the classes that I hooked, it's amazing I ever graduated from high school. But I did. And despite all my drinking and drugging, I managed to get a job in an Italian grocery store as the bakery manager. But I continued to hang out in bars every night. Hiya, Jamie. I hope you'd be in tonight. I can't stay away. You run the most popular bar in town. Oh, no wonder with you coming here. Everybody wants to be with you. Oh, flattery will get you everywhere. I hope so. Hey, when are we going out? Hey, let's go. I get off work in a half an hour. I'll be right here. What would you like to drink while you're waiting? Something strong. Eventually, we were married. In a way, it was appropriate for me to marry a man who managed a bar. But it was also risky because we spent a lot of time drinking. In fact, my life didn't change much because even though I was married, I'd leave work every day and go to a different bar for happy hour. But happy hour lasted a long time. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. I gotta remember that. Hey, hey, I'm empty. Who's ready for another round? Listen, Jamie. I got something better than that. Yeah? Good stuff? Huh? Oh, I have something so good, you'll never want anything else. But it's best taken with a needle. Hey, I, I don't do heroin. It's not heroin. It's coke. But you take a direct hit. Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, I do. And you'll love it. Uh, will I be able to drive home? You know, it's getting to be that time. Of course. Hobby waiting. Well, he gets off work pretty soon. You sure have an understanding husband. 
Letting you stay out nights in a bar. Why not? He stays out nights in a bar, too. Yeah, but he's working. He doesn't care. Come on, then. Let's get loaded. I've been using cocaine heavily, but when I started taking it with a needle, <laughs> my life went downhill fast. That's all I wanted from then on. I was stoned every day and hanging out in bars every night. I thought my marriage was fine, but in my condition, how would I have known? One day I came home to a surprise. I didn't know you still lived here. <laughs> hey, you beat me home. I beat you home most of the time. In fact, I hardly ever see you. I was out with the gang. Why don't you just stay out with the gang? Wh what do you mean? Jamie, I've had it. I want a divorce. Wh why? We don't fight. No, no, we don't fight. We don't do anything. And we sure don't have a marriage. Oh, yeah. What do you mean, just like that? It's over? Yeah. You can spend more time with the gang now. <sighs> Is that everything? Uh, I think so. I really appreciate your letting me move in with you, Pam. <laughs> what are sisters for? I'm just sorry your marriage didn't work out. Who would have believed it? After six years, I, I mean, everything seemed fine. Uh, you two were spending less and less time together. But we got along okay. I mean, I thought we did. You need to lay off drugs, Jamie. No, it wasn't the drugs. I don't know. That Coke is bad stuff. But I didn't lay off drugs, and I didn't quit drinking. If anything, I indulged even more until I was constantly coming in late for work. Jamie, you're late again. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't feel good. Now, this can't go on. We need someone we can rely on. I'll try to do better. Is there some problem you're not telling us about? Yeah. Uh, I probably drink too much. Mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, check into a rehabilitation clinic? Does it do any good? If you want to change, you can, Jamie. Now, we'll work with you on this. Otherwise, we'll have to let you go. Okay. I'll give it a try. Hey, Jamie. Long time no see. Where you been? Haven't you heard? I had my wrist slapped at work. They sent me through drug and alcohol rehab. <laughs> rehab? You? Yeah, hard to believe, I know. But I went for a whole month, and I've been clean for three months now. You must be getting real thirsty. Yeah, that's why I go to AA every night. I'm on my way to a meeting now. I have a better idea. Let's go have a drink and catch up on things. Uh, I better not. Oh, come on. You can have just one. Good grief. No, that's the problem. I never stop at one. With all the training you just got, you can stop at one. Come on. I'm buying. Even though someone else bought, I paid for it dearly. I fell in with the old crowd. Before long, I was doing cocaine and trying every kind of drug there was, except for crack and heroin. And naturally, I started coming into work late again. Ah, uh, Jamie, you were doing so well for a while. Yeah, I, I'm sorry again. I, I, I'm sorry I'm late. Well, your work has always been good, but we just can't put up with this any longer. I, I've been here for nine years. I know, I know. And I'm, I'm sorry, Jamie. You're fired. Without a job, I had a hard time finding money for drugs. So I started stealing from my family. Every now and then, I would get into my mother's or my sister's pocketbook and take 10 or $20, just enough to maintain my drug habit. Then one day, I took more. Oh, no! What is it? My tax money's missing! Your tax money? $2,000 I was saving to pay my real estate taxes. Maybe you just mislaid it. No, I had it right here and it's gone. You sure you didn't already pay your taxes, Mom? Of course I'm sure. Just trying to think of all the possibilities. You haven't seen the money, have you? No! Well, what am I going to do? I 
And what was I gonna do? I had sunk to a new low stealing like that. And yet I felt trapped between my need for drugs and my inability to buy them. Oh, I was failing as a person. One day it all caught up with me as I sat in a bar. Feeling hopeless, I, I started to cry and lowered my head so no one would see. I wanted to commit suicide. Jamie thought no one had seen her tears, but someone had. She'll tell us about it in just a moment. When we speak of the homeless, we tend to think of a man down on his luck. But there's another group of homeless people more defenseless than that. Here's Dave Saulnier, superintendent of Pacific Garden Mission, to tell you more. That group includes women alone or women with children, and there are growing numbers of them. In the late 40s, we opened our women's division, which quickly filled up and expanded to occupy two floors in our main building. Then a few years ago, we took over operation of the Gospel League home, several miles away. Presently, we shelter more than 100 women and children a night. How do most of these women find out about the mission, Dave? The Lord uses many ways to bring them to us. Some are sent here by the courts or by social agencies. Occasionally, the police bring someone to us. Other women come here on their own. Perhaps they've heard about us through a friend or on the radio. Some have passed by the mission on the bus or walking. However they get here, we welcome them, make them comfortable, and help them change their lives. It must be a tremendous relief to these women to find a refuge like this. We try to provide a home-like setting that meets their physical and spiritual needs, a clean, safe, homey environment in which to live. The children have a playroom that's sunny bright and filled with toys, and the women have laundry facilities. There's even a small kitchenette and living area, but they take their main meals in our large dining room downstairs. We have Bible studies for both the women and children, as well as counselors to help them find new life in Christ. And that's a brief look at the women's division at Pacific Garden Mission. If you'd like more information about this or any of our other ministries, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. When I got control of my crying and lifted my head, there was a cute guy sitting next to me. Hey, you can't cry in your beer if you don't have a drink to cry into. Why don't you let me buy? <laughs> okay. Hey, just remember, no matter how bad things are, they always look better through the bottom of a glass. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> You sure have a pretty smile, Jamie. Are you feeling better? Yeah, thanks to you. <laughs> uh, do you ever get high? Hey, every chance I can get. Well, let's go outside and smoke then. We'll go from one joint to another. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of connections for buying drugs. So after we got high, I took him to buy some cocaine and we went back to my sister's apartment. Before long, he moved in with us, and we lived together for a while without incident. But then we had a problem. Oh, my mother's pretty unhappy about our living together. Why? Oh, she goes to church. So what? She calls it sin. Sin? Mm -hmm. I didn't think anybody even still used that word. Oh, she does. It gives me a load of trash every time I see her. Hey, it's none of her business. She thinks it is, and I'm tired of hearing about it. Let's move out of town. Like where? Up to Pennsylvania. We can stay with my grandmother. Is she religious? <laughs> she goes to church three times a week, but she won't give us a hard time. It sure is nice to see you again, Jamie. You and your friend... And you're more than welcome to stay here with me until you find a place. I'm so tickled that you're going to live close by. Should we bring in our stuff, Granny? Yeah, of course. Now, you can have the room next to me, and your friend can have the room down the hall. Uh, you want to help me carry, Jamie? Uh, sure. There's a church service tonight at 7. Wonderful. 
out of the frying pan and into the fire. Hey, at least we're welcome. Isn't she great? Oh, yeah, but separate rooms. <laughs> and do we have to go to church? It won't hurt you. At least it never hurt me. We stayed with my grandmother for a while and went to church to please her. But because we had to live in separate rooms, we finally got our own place nearby and lived together again. My boyfriend, who was now my fiancé, got a job and things were going okay. We weren't doing drugs as much since we had no connections in Pennsylvania, but there was still the local bar where we got drunk, which caused problems. Why'd you say what you did to that guy? What guy? That guy sitting next to us. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't give me that. You're drunk. Go sleep it off. You put me down. Oh, oh, don't you touch me. Don't you ever put me down. (laughs) You're hurting me. That was the worst fight we ever had. But even though he tried to strangle me, we patched things up. We never seemed to see that alcohol was our biggest problem. And although we continued going to church to please my grandmother, we also continued to drink. One day, my fiancé came home from work drunk. Hey, come on, let's go somewhere. I I don't feel like staying here. I better drive, because you look like you've had a few too many already. Give me those keys. Don't tell me what to do. I'm driving. Crazy driver. Hey, get out of my way. Slow down, will ya? Look out. (laughs) Well, we had a bad car accident. I was thrown through the windshield and taken to the hospital where I lay in a coma. How's she doing? The same. No response. At least she's still alive. Her face looks better. But it's been five weeks. My poor little girl. People at church are praying for her. The Lord will bring her through this. Oh, I don't know. I thought the brain surgery would help. But she's still in a coma. Well, I trust the Lord. He's the healer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get something to eat. It was a long drive. I might go with you. Granny? I'll stay here with Jamie for a while. Jamie? Jamie? Jesus loves you, honey. And he wants you to live. Granny? Oh, Praise God. The doctor said we can visit with her now. He's finished with his examination. Is she awake? Mm Mm-hmm. She's still groggy from the drugs, but she's conscious. I want to see her. Jamie? Oh, honey. Mom... Mom, I can't see very well. Well, at least you're alive. But I'm half blind. I was blind in one eye, but she was right. At least I was alive. After six weeks in the hospital, I was transferred to a rehabilitation center to regain strength. My sister drove up to visit with me. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, There's something we need to tell you, Jamie. It's about your fiancé. Why haven't I heard from him? Is he all right? No, he didn't make it. He died in the accident. Oh, no. I'm sorry. What am I going to do? My life is so messed up. What's the point of it all? After six months in the rehabilitation center, I was finally allowed to go home. So I went to live with my grandmother, who was the one bright spot in my gloomy life. I knew something was wrong with me, something worse than being half-blind, something I couldn't change. Sick at heart, I felt a deep void in my life. 
If only I could rehabilitate my soul. You seem kind of morose, Jamie. Yeah. I'm not much company, Granny. Sorry. Why don't you go to church with me today? I feel like my life is ruined. I've made so many mistakes. I wish I could change things, but... Oh, it's too late. It's not too late. Jesus still loves you. You can't change the past, but he can change the future. Come on to church. A lot of people prayed for you, honey. They'll be glad to see you. You're right. I'll go with you. I went to church with my grandmother and received a welcome that made me feel good. I saw that those people cared about me. They had prayed for me when my life hung in the balance. Yet I had never cared about them. What made them so different? I listened closely as the pastor spoke. Jesus said in John 3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What did he mean by that? Well, what would keep someone from seeing? He might be born blind, or he might be in darkness and unable to see, or he might be able to see and have plenty of light, but just not comprehend. And actually the answer is all of the above. We are all born spiritually blind, separated from God, living a life of sin. God says we are all sinners. And the darkness of sin keeps us from seeing God. Turn to 2 Corinthians 4.3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. That's why men don't see the kingdom of God. Satan has blinded their understanding. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again of the Spirit of God. When you see yourself as God sees you, sinful, unable to save yourself, desperately in need of the Savior, and you ask Christ into your heart and life, then you're born again by faith. Jesus paid the penalty for your sins with his death on the cross that he might bring you to God. Now that's love, to pay a debt of that magnitude for someone else, a debt he didn't owe. Salvation is a gift from God, a gift of love. Won't you come and receive that gift by receiving Christ into your life. I gave my life to the Lord, believing Him to be my Savior, asking Him to save me, and He was quick to answer. What a change in my life. Now, instead of drinking buddies, I have friends who love Christ, like my grandmother, I go to church whenever I can. I'm still blind in one eye, so I can't drive. And because of the accident, I don't work outside the home. But I try to help my grandmother. Now, what in the world? How did that get up here? What is it? Well, that part for the vacuum cleaner. I've been looking everywhere for it. Oh, I put it there. I thought it was something else. <laughs> A hairbrush, no uh, doubt. <laughs> Granny, I can't even see dirt. I'm not much help to you. Nonsense. You may not be able to see dirt, but you can see Jesus. And he's all that matters. Have I ever really thanked you for praying for me? You and your friends at church. You made all the difference. I'm so glad you prayed. I may be half blind, but you're right. I can see Jesus now.
Romans 6.23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jamie experienced the truth of that verse in a very personal way. And friend, you too can have the gift of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't wait until later. There may not be a later. If you'd like counsel in this crucial time, you're invited to get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois, 60605. The telephone number in Chicago is area 312 922 If you listen in the Philippines, you may address Unshackled in care of the Pacific Mission, Post Office Box 1467, Manila. Thanks for taking a moment to write and tell us you hear these programs, and we hope you'll ask others to listen as well. And remember to let the manager of this station know that you enjoy Unshackled. This is program number 2,168. Heard in the true story of Jamie Anderson were Lisa Keefe, Mercita DeMonk, Trish Elliott, Camilla Hawk, Fern Persons, Jack Bivens, and Tom Geich. Original music, Lucille Becker. Sound, Nicoloisio. Engineer, Ed Webb. Script, Kenetha Gabler, and I'm Bob O'Donnell. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Right soon, we look forward to hearing from you. Pacific Garden Mission, Chicago, Illinois. If you're going through troubling times and would like some encouragement, you're invited to call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago, 312 312- 9221462 someone is waiting for your call Mission has moved, and therefore our new telephone number is 312-492-9410. Again, that new number is 312-492-9410. give you that address and telephone number one more time. Excuse me, if you want to write to Pacific Garden Mission, simply address your envelope to Unshackled, 1458 South Canal, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number, if you want to call them, is 312-492-9410. And take time to visit their website. You'll find it quite interesting. Unshackled.org. That's unshackled.org. There you'll find all the details of the history of Pacific Garden Mission all the way up to the present time. Remember, they've been around since 1877. And I say it often. They've been around a lot longer.
than all of us, and they're doing a tremendous work. If you email them, it's unshackled, unshackled at pgm.org, unshackled at pgm.org. And if you write them, phone them, or email them, tell them that you heard unshackled right here on the George Espinlob Show. And we would like to hear from you, too. Simply email us, George C.E., George C.E. at Comcast.net, George C.E. at Comcast.net. And as we say each and every night, we will respond to each and every one of you that emails us, George C.E. at Comcast.net, and we'll thank you for it. We're going to leave you for tonight, but from the bottom of our hearts, each and every one of us here on the George Espinlob Show, and yes, there's more than just me, we want to say thank you for your prayers, thank you for your kind words. Continue storming heaven with your prayers. We believe in the power of prayer. Thank you so very, very much. Wherever you're at, if it's nighttime, you have a great night. If it's already tomorrow, then you have a fine day. But regardless of where you're at or what it is, until tomorrow night, Freaky Friday at the Funny Farm. You know how Fridays are. Tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Spreaker Network. Tune in for the George Espinlob Show. To all of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation, and around the world, this is George Espinlove saying until tomorrow night, stay safe, be kind, keep praying, and God bless you real, real good. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'll see you tomorrow night. That There's just something